What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel once again. Today we have yet another Bandai Godzilla figure unboxing and this is a very special one because this is the anniversary this year 2024 of 1954 the first appearance of Gojira in 1954. It is the 70th anniversary of Godzilla. So in celebration of that, we have the Bandai Godzilla right here, uh, the king of the monsters himself, the one and only 1954 Gojira by Bandai. So we'll take a closer look at this guy here in just a few minutes. So once again, my name is Matt and this is the Pop Complex. Guys, welcome back to the Pop Complex again. Today we have the Bandai 1954 first appearance of Godzilla or Gojira. So this is in celebration of the 70th anniversary of our King of Kaiju, Gojira Godzilla himself. So we have the 1954 first appearance right here, the Bandai Godzilla, taking a closer look at the package as always, consistent with the other Bandai and Playmates releases. Uh, we have this giant epic Godzilla logo here across the front, the Bandai logo here. If we turn it to the side, we have that same epic logo on the sides. The bottom of the packaging is that empty open hollow cardboard uh, packaging style that we're used to. It's this open air. Uh, the figure is completely exposed, just strapped into the to the cardboard uh, holder and back here. Uh, but if we take a closer look here, uh, we can see the Japanese character logo here of Gojira or Godzilla there. And again, consistent with the other Bandai Godzilla figures, we have a uh, picture of the toy itself, which he's right here, but it's the picture of this toy, the 1954 right there. And we have some uh, Tokyo background there in the back. Let's flip it around to the back of this packaging and take a closer look. Now the back of this packaging is again, consistent with the same Bandai uh, Godzilla figures that we have unboxed here in the past on the channel. So again, we have the same three here. We have the 1954 Godzilla himself right here. And then we have the Millennium Godzilla, which I just unboxed here on the channel. Gonna put a link in the description there and a card up here in the right hand corner. And we also have King Caesar. So we have unboxed this guy previously on the channel as well. Again, a link will be in the description. Uh, but we have those figures and we have collect them all here. We have again the epic Godzilla logo. We have the legal and barcode information. And as always, we have the Godzilla uh, pictographic logo and the King Caesar pictographic logo there as well. So pretty simple packaging again, guys, consistent with the other Bandai uh, and to a lesser extent, the other Playmates releases. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get Godzilla 1954, Gojira, King of the Kaiju, King of the Monsters out of the package and take a closer look at him. Stay tuned, guys. All right, and we're back here with the 1954 Bandai Godzilla out of the packaging. So let's take a closer look at this guy and closer detail. If I bring him closer into the camera uh, on the head and kind of move some of the lighting around a little bit so we can get a better uh, view of the actual face and the details here. As you can see, the 1954 uh, Godzilla has those little... Uh, kind of aggressive, angry looking beady eyes. That is one of the trademarks of the 1954 Gojira and this toy uh, replicates that look very faithfully here. Uh, the paint job on the fangs is not too bad. Uh, sometimes we see kind of some smearing and some running together of the white paint because it's such a fine detail. Uh, again, when these were released, uh, they're, they're not a huge price point, not a very high price point. So. Uh, the detail is very simplistic in a lot of these Bandai and Playmates figures, which I have discussed in a lot of my previous reviews. Uh, so don't expect too much level of, of high detail with something like uh, maybe, you know, for example, the NECA uh, Godzillas that have that very high hyper realistic uh, level of detail in these. But these are very simplistic. And again, they do remind me a lot of the 
uh, plastic dinosaurs that I played with as a child. I was absolutely in love with dinosaurs as a kid and I had a lot of those cheap plastic ones that uh, my mom would buy me at uh, you know dollar stores and big lots. Uh, and those were just really fun, really fun. I love those and they were uh, really great childhood memories. But back to this guy. Now the skin, uh, if you notice here, uh, the first thing I noticed, the skin color is uh, a much lighter gray. It's still a dark gray, but much lighter uh, than let's say, you know, the, the 68 that I just unboxed here on the channel uh, and the Millennium Godzilla. Uh, that actually, those two figures had that very dark, dark charcoal gray on the skin, almost uh, bordering on black uh, as being the primary color. Very, very dark gray, but this, this guy's much, much lighter uh, in color. And let's take a closer look at those uh, dorsal plates. Really nice, jagged, uh, rough detail on those dorsal plates, as you can see, flipping around to this side, as you can see, turning it toward the light. Uh, those dorsal plates have some fading, some gradient, uh, they do get lighter gray as we come up to the tips, so that's a nice detail. As you can see here, going down into the uh, spines and the dorsal plates here along the ridges on his back, uh, you do see a lot of that lighter gray uh, being washed in there in between those and on the tips of these outer uh, smaller dorsal plates. Here on the tail though, unfortunately, there is a little bit of uh, uh, excess on that lighter paint right here before we get to the seam of where the tail is articulated. Uh, so it kind of takes us a little bit out of the illusions, kind of some messy paint there. And again, here, some of that heavier gray uh, up here on the dorsal plates that come off of the head ridges right there, as you can see. Uh, but let's take a closer look. Now this guy uh, does have the uh, one of the characteristics of like the Showa era Godzillas in particular uh, is he does have some pretty thick legs as we can see here. And uh, because he's so uh, thicker on the bottom, uh, it kind of gives the illusion if you look here that his head is really, really small in comparison to the rest of his body. Uh, but that is a, a key characteristic of the 1954 uh, Gojira. So we'll flip him around and take a closer look at this tail. A very sizable, lengthy tail there. I think that's one of the features that uh, gives a good Godzilla suit or good Godzilla appearance. Uh, that mighty presence on screen uh, is the, the good length on the tail there. And then we'll take a closer look here at the claws on the feet. We have uh, four, four claws there, three, and then more of like a smaller, uh, lesser uh, claw there on each inner side. So let's talk about the articulation on this guy. Uh, so this guy does have a cut right here at the bottom of his neck. So you can get side to side looking uh, to the left and to the right. Now you do get what appears to be a full 360 degree rotation. Uh, but of course you really wouldn't need that if you're posing this guy. Uh, but it does look good if he is looking off to the side, either to the left or to the right kind of like that, however you would like to display him. And then the next point of articulation comes in the arms. This one is a little bit higher cut uh, than his right arm, uh, but you can see the cut right here. So uh, it stops right here at the top of his leg here. So he can't get a full 360 degree, uh, but it kind of goes back until we hit the back of the leg there as well. Uh, but you can go pretty high up with both of the arms. Now there is a little bit more of a sculpted bend uh, in this arm, as you can see the other arm. So we'll take a look at this arm. And as you can see that the way that it's sculpted here is what maintains the illusion, the seamless illusion of the skin posed right here at this angle. Uh, but he can get down as far as the leg will allow him forward and then backward again, as far as the back of his uh, back here does allow. But again, you can get some pretty high angles there uh, with both of his arms, putting those back down. Uh, the next points of articulation are in the legs. There's only one thigh cut for this guy. And you know, with the way Godzilla is, uh, is designed overall, you can't really get much leg articulation. I think NECA was able to give us some good articulation, at least in the knees and swivels at the ankles as well, uh, but his legs are just so thick that there's not 
a whole lot of room for some detailed articulation to get any uh, really detailed poses. But again, with this guy, with the way the suits were, with the way he moves in the films, not really necessary overall. It makes a great display piece without too many cuts to spoil the illusion. Uh, but his leg articulation, he can only go back about this far because the cuts here and the sculpting on his torso prevent his leg from going all the way back. And he can get just about to right there. Uh, so not quite, uh, just maybe barely at a 45 degree angle uh, forward. Uh, not too much. Again, you don't really need it with this guy, with the character, especially when you're displaying him. And again, the same. Uh, now this this leg can get a little bit higher because it's cut a little bit different, posed there, uh, sculpted, and he can go back. Uh, wow, okay, so we're almost getting a full 360 degree rotation with this leg, only stopped by this arm here, uh, but again, not that you really need it. So pretty basic uh, leg articulation there on this guy. And then the final piece, which let's discuss this cut right here, guys. You can see a cut right here where his torso uh, meets the absolute thickest base part of his tail. Uh, but this is merely for uh, assembly purposes. This is not a point of articulation. Uh, this is merely where the two pieces of the toy were uh, joined and uh, attached together. Uh, so it does, again, kind of ruin the illusion a little bit, but I can see why uh, the, the choice was made uh, in that instance, but uh, he is articulated. The final point of articulation is about halfway down his tail, as we've kind of looked at before. And again, as usual, you can always get a full 360 degree rotation, usually with the uh, Godzilla toys on the tail portion there. So uh, that's about it for his tail articulation. And again, the way the dorsal plates are molded, it follows that natural, uh, that natural spinal line. So without spoiling the illusion, this guy right here where he is lined up and the dorsal plates line up just like that is the default uh, position that does not ruin that illusion. So there he is, guys, and he is going to look amazing on my shelf with all the rest of my gojis. So guys, let me know what you think down below. If you have this guy, do you want this guy? Tell me all about your thoughts about the 1954, the 70th anniversary of Gojira. And uh, let me know what you think about all of the other favorite Kaijus that you, uh, that you are fans of. So I would ask that if you like this video, please don't hesitate to hit that like button. And as always, the best thing you can do to support the channel is hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell to be notified anytime the Pop Complex uploads a new video. You can support the channel monetarily also by going to patreon.com forward slash the Pop Complex. There will be a link in the description. And if you want to feed your Pop Complex merch addiction and needs, go to thepopcomplex.com, link in the description to get a nice hoodie or Pop Complex t-shirt. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a truly monstrous day. Oh, <laughs>